Tonight, Troy gets commended for its international efforts. Plus, students hear some safety tips. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision News starts now. From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for November 20th, 2014. I'm Joy Nelson. And I'm Justin Allen. Thank you for joining us this evening. It is International Education Week at Troy University, and even though the school is often referred to as Alabama's International University, that claim is now backed up by Governor Robert Bentley. Governor Bentley signed a proclamation Wednesday afternoon commending Troy for its leadership in international education. Governor Bentley was joined at the signing by members of Troy University's international student body, which totals nearly 800 students from 75 different countries. University leaders feel that diversity makes for a fun learning environment. Well, this is one of the, again, fun things and rewarding things about being at Troy is learning from these students. And so in this International uh, Education Week, we're having those opportunities every day to hear them give their perspectives, to share a meal with them, to learn about their country. So I love this time of year. International Education Week activities wrap up with the annual ISCA Festival tonight in the Trojan Center ballrooms. If you are packing up to head home for the Thanksgiving holiday, don't forget to take some extra caution and be sure that your dorm room or apartment is secure while you are gone. If you aren't sure how to prepare your home for your absence, Lieutenant Brian Weed with the Troy Police Department shares some helpful tips that will hopefully give you peace of mind while you are away. With the Thanksgiving holiday quickly approaching and a large majority of students leaving Troy, it's important to know how to secure your home while you are away. Here are a few tips that might help you in doing so. Well, we you know, want people to understand that um, a lot of the thefts, the property thefts, are, are crimes of opportunity. Um, leaving things in your car in plain sight, you know, we really try to, you know, stress to people that, you know, make sure they put those things, you know, in the trunk or at least out of sight. So people walking by, you know, don't take the opportunity to lock in their vehicle, keeping the windows up, and just being aware of the surroundings, whether it be in parking lots or at their uh, complexes. Lieutenant Weed says the holidays are a vital time for people to commit crimes, and now is the prime time to learn how to protect yourself and your property. In our complexes, apartment complex and stuff, um, you know, people that, uh, that commit these crimes in the community, they know what's going on in the schools. They know when, you know, the school's out for the holidays, and they take that, that opportunity to try to, uh, to commit some of these, these property crimes. If you are staying in Troy for the holiday and are concerned about your safety, Lieutenant Weed offers a few contacts you can reach out to. If anybody ever has any questions, um, you know, they're more than welcome. You know, the police department's there to help. Um, you know, 566-0500 is our number. Uh, if there's anything that they, they want to report and they, they want to stay anonymous, they can call 566-5555, which is our secret witness line. And uh, we appreciate, you know, our, our biggest tool in the community is the community itself. Lieutenant Weed also advised taking specific items such as laptops and tablets home with you for the holiday. A Troy University fraternity is trying to bring awareness of domestic violence to campus. The Brothers of Omega Sci-Fi held a seminar to inform students about the issues. Ryan Renfro has a story. Last night, the Omega Sci-Fi fraternity here at Troy University held a seminar in Patterson Hall for all students to attend. The topic of the event was one that many people have difficulty discussing. One member of the fraternity tells us why they felt the need to increase awareness on domestic violence. One of the most important things that are important to us is the protection of womanhood. And, you know, most of the time when you hear cases about domestic violence, you hear about women being the victims. But a lot of people don't know that there are a lot of male victims as well. So we just wanted to shine a light on that situation. And One faculty member here on campus decided to speak out about domestic violence and gives us an insight on what motivates her to increase awareness. Wanting to do more you know, to get the, the word out. Domestic violence is something that um, people don't like to talk about, something that, you know, people think that you keep behind closed doors. It's a personal issue, um, and the more awareness we can get out there, the better off we are. As domestic violence continues to become a problem, one member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity shares what inspired him and his brothers to participate in the discussion. I just want to come out and be aware of what's going on and how, how things can be prevented and just really get some awareness on the situation. Ryan Renfro, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Up next, Omega Sci-Fi will hold a pageant tonight at 7 in Claudia Crosby Theater. 
Yesterday, we learned about the hidden talent of one Trojan Vision News anchor in our Trojan Profile series. That's right, Jordan. And in today's segment, we will see how another one of our anchors balances her on-camera work with her time competing in pageants. Pageant girl, Miss Silicaga, Sound of the South dance member or Trojan Vision news anchor. Victoria Bailey is a hardworking jack of all trades. Victoria explains being Miss Silicaga is one of her biggest accomplishments. I felt really accomplished. Uh, the time I won Miss Silicaga, I had competed two years before that and got first runner up both times. So uh, the third year, I was really excited. It was almost like winning Miss America. Victoria is also a broadcast journalism major. She is currently working as the weather girl and global news producer. Victoria explains how she gets prepared for the daily show and how she sometimes is still nervous when on air. Preparing for Global is a really long process. We have to gather the stories from CNN or other news sources like CBS. Uh, we have to cut up the story. We have to pull out leads. We have to pretty much put the show together in full. I still get nervous whenever I get on camera. Um, the editing process has gotten a lot better and the going out and reporting has gotten a lot better. Victoria recently competed for the Miss Troy University pageant 2015. She received first runner up and Bailey tells us her most favorite part about competing in the pageant with other girls. Well, I would have to say getting to know the girls that I compete with. I compete with some amazing girls and I'm just honored to be able to stand on the stage with them. Many may wonder how a small town girl branches out to want to represent her city through pageants or her university through Trojan Vision. Victoria explains exactly how she gets her motivation. My mother, she is from a third world country, South America, and uh, she grew up, you know, not being able to go to dance class or go to piano lessons, and she just wanted to make sure that I had those opportunities, and I want to make sure that I make her proud by doing the best I can in all of them. Xavier Harris, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We will continue our Trojan Profile series tomorrow with a look at the student who keeps things running right here at Trojan Vision News. And now taking a look at news from around the state, a federal appeals board was, uh, has upheld the firing of the former director of the Central Alabama Veterans Health Care System. The Veterans Administration terminated James Talton in late October for the neglect of duty. He appealed to the U.S. Merit Systems Protection Board. The board issued a 32-page decision upholding the termination. And police indicators say a worker on the roof of the Aquadome Recreation Center was killed when he stepped through a skylight and fell about 25 feet onto basketball courts inside. Decatur police say 35-year-old Bobby Ray McDuffie of Hansville was moving an item across the roof when he fell about 440 yesterday afternoon. The State Conservation Department says hunters will have access to more public land when the Forever Wild Land Trust opens the Sipsi River Complex North Zone to hunting on Saturday. The recent acquisition by the Forever Wild Program adds nearly 3,800 acres to the Sipsi River Complex near Northport. And still to come on Troy Trojan Vision News, we see how the men's basketball team is preparing for their next SEC opponent, Georgia, when Clay Yeager joins us in sports. Plus, President Obama has a big announcement about immigration. We'll have that and more coming up next. Stay with us. President Obama gets ready to take action on immigration while Republicans promise a fight. I'm Craig Boswell at the White House. That story coming up. We're the stronger than we look type. The braver than you think type. The type that knows the time will come when we put type one behind us. We're the progress is inevitable type. The hopeful for a cure type. The type that will stop at nothing until type one becomes type none. The warrior spirit, it's in there, always has been. Now let it out and take the world by fire. Train well and learn what it means to be a Troy Trojan. Walk with confidence, conquer, claim territory and climb ladders. Know that you have the power to stand alone, but the comfort of knowing that you'll never have to. Discover your inner warrior. Find it at troy.edu slash spirit. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. 
As the men's basketball team shifts its focus to another SEC opponent, the Trojans are trying to find ways they need to get better in their matchup with Georgia. In Troy's last game against Ole Miss, the Trojans struggled with rebounding the ball with only 28 compared to the Rebels, who had 42 rebounds. Assistant coach Marcus Grant says it will be a key component to not only winning the upcoming game, but having a successful season as well. These next couple of opponents are really, really aggressive on the offensive rebounding. So rebounding would be a focal point uh, for us the next couple of days. Uh, we're heading to play Georgia on Friday, and they're, they're a really big basketball team, and their advantage is on the inside, rebounding the basketball. So we're going to emphasize uh, technique, rebounding technique all week. Uh, just, just focus on that because that's, that's going to be a big key to, to the game on Friday. The Trojans will see if they have what it takes tomorrow when they take on Georgia in Athens at 6 p.m. The women's basketball team will look for their first win in the early season against southeastern Louisiana. The Lions have played two games so far with only losing one against the University of Minnesota, 109-60. The Trojans have played three games and have lost two so far. However, this will be the first game at home for the Trojans this season and is also the first time the two teams have met. Head coach Shanda Rigby says she is tired of moral victories and is ready for a win. I expect to get our first win, first and foremost. Um, we kind of had a couple moral victories this past weekend, but we're tired of those. We want a victory on the win column. And uh, I think we'll be off the races once we can get a win under our belt and get some confidence that, that, that that's how we're going to operate is, is through winning. So, um, so my expectation is a high scoring game on both sides of the ball, on both sides of the scoreboard, and to get a first win. The Trojans will take on southeastern Louisiana tomorrow in the Trojan Arena at 12 p.m. The volleyball team will get one more shot this weekend to break their 17-game losing streak when they take on Georgia State and South Alabama. The team has not had the season they have wanted so far as they finished in the, and last in the Sun Belt standings. However, the regular season is coming to a close and head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick says the team is more driven than ever to win the last two games. We're always driven to win. I mean, that's, that's their job. That's my job. Our, our job is to win. And uh, we're, we're trying to, to overcome some, some difficult odds this year. But, you know, when we compete and we play hard, we always have an opportunity to play and, and win. And uh, we expect no less going into this weekend. The end of the regular season for the Trojans start this Friday when they take on Georgia State in Atlanta at 5 p.m. The Trojan football season is drawing to a close, and some players are looking to make the next step in their football careers. JCF Felt shows us one player who is trying to reach the next level and may have gotten some big help from a little preseason viral video hype. Terrence Jones, a graduate student from Huntsville, Alabama, plays right tackle for the Troy University football team. Jones has started every game for the Trojans during his career, currently starting the most consecutive games in the NCAA by an active player. Jones feels that attending Troy has shaped him as a person more than anything. College is just an experience and I feel like college helps you find who you are as a person growing up. I mean, Troy's helped a lot and just because that's the college I went to, if I went anywhere else maybe I might be different, but I'm glad I went here and I feel like I'm a decent person and <laughs> I'm just happy with how things went. Having won an accolade each of his four years playing at Troy University, including three Sun Belt first team selections. The offensive tackle knows a thing or two about leadership. A leader is somebody who encourages people and is positive and do, you want people to do with better, but you have to be doing better yourself. You have to be someone who leads by example as well as somebody in front telling them what to do and stuff. Instead of being a boss, you need to be a leader. So the boss just tells people what to do. A leader does it with them. Jones shocked the nation this past offseason by squatting a school record 810 pounds. Although he knew what he was capable of, he was shocked by all the attention it received from the rest of the college football community. I wasn't surprised by it. I was surprised by how much fame it got because I was just like, no, really? Nobody's really done 800 pounds in college football? And I guess that's a rare thing, so that's why I guess that's why it blew up. Although Jones plans to graduate with his master's degree in business next December, he says that it would mean a lot to him to be able to pursue a career in the NFL. I love the game of football, and if I can do something they want to pay me for, it would be great. And uh, it would mean a lot to me. It would be something that I could finally say my hard work finally paid off. And it's a once in a million dream. Jones will play his last game in a Troy Trojan uniform on November 29th against Louisiana Lafayette. JCFL. Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. Terrence and the rest of the Trojans will take on UL Lafayette November 29th at Veterans Memorial Stadium.